Well, greetings, Four Color fans, and welcome here to Metarog's channel. And today I'm going to take you through the first part of probably three, uh, in which I'm going to take you through a journey that I took with the Legion of Superheroes for 25 years. Now, actually, it's longer than that, and I didn't start at the beginning, but I'll get into that later. Before I get into that, real quick, in case you have not entered, in case you did not know, I am having a Road to 1500 subscriber giveaway. I'm currently at 1,480 subscribers, so I need 20 more. And then the contest will vest, and I will do a live stream and have the giveaways. I'm not going to show that for time constraints, but I've showed it in my previous videos and a very special prize I will have in the live stream. And also I'll have some friends with me that are also giving stuff away, including comic bookworm and oddball comics. So, okay, that's enough of that. Let's get on to this stream, right? So I'm going to start showing comics that, that had the Legion of Superheroes included starting in 1969. And the reason I'm starting there is that at that point is where they had stopped uh, starring in Adventure Comics with 380. And it, I guess sales were just down a bit, but it looks like the editors or the publisher, DC, did not want to um, do away with them completely. So what they did is that Supergirl was the backup feature in Action Comics. They made her the main feature in Adventure Comics. And then the Legion of Superheroes became the backup feature in Action Comics, starting with 377. Now, this is actually a reprint uh, of uh, a Legion of Adventure 300. Uh, I'm not going to go into too much to show these pretty quickly because the Legion are, are not really, are not, uh, not, ri not, not really, except for this little blurb up here. They're not featured at all on these covers. So <laughs> there's not a lot of Legion to show here. You're going to see a lot of, of Superman covers. I will state that the story, the Legion stories in here are, uh, you know, they're, they're by Jim Shooter, but they're just not that interesting. The art by Wynn Mortimer is not good. I mean, I don't know how else to say it, guys. Uh, all his all his faces look like alike, and they're just very uninspired, you know? Um, stuff here, uh, not a lot. I mean, to me, this is sort of like the transition to the Bronze Age, and that's where I started here. But there's not a lot of really anything going on that makes any difference. Uh, the only... The only thing I would say is that at the end, the very last issue, you see a new costume for Saturn Girl, uh, which is in this issue here. And that's about the only innovation that's in there. Again, very, very uninspired story. There are other writers, I think even Jerry Siegel did an issue. Um, but again, they're, they're, they just were really nothing uh, to rally write home about. But, I mean, I'm a completist, so, of course, I had to have it. And especially, you know, since they transitioned. Uh, all this is, you know, go leading to their own, um, eventually to star in their own comic, right? So, after 392, they came out of Action Comics. And Supergirl went back in, I believe. So... Um, they had to go somewhere, I suppose, and so they went to Superboy, since he was part of the Legion. And these stories, again, are just not that hot to begin with. Um, they, 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 they had a, a backup feature, but it really was more like, you know, let's just sort of tread water here. Um, and again... Jim Shooter was started to do these stories, and you know, some are okay. I think there's actually a Jerry Siegel in here somewhere. I think George Tuska starts doing some of these stories, and the the then Carrie Bates came comes on to write, and he was a much better writer, uh, at least in this. Uh, you know, at least it seemed he seemed more inspired than Shooter at this point. And at this point, he also we also got an artist called Dave Cockrum to do the art for the Legion. And now the Legion is starting to look a lot more futuristic and we're, we're adding uh, costumes that look more like 30th century costumes rather than 
very blah kind of, you know, what 60s people might might think 30th century uh, uh, outfits would look like, right? Um, and yes, uh, we start, Cockrum just did a lot to de redesign those costumes to make them a lot more, you know, just, you know, a lot more striking, a lot more in tune with the, uh, you know, characters of, you know, of the Legion of Superheroes, you know, not all covered up head to toe, right? So here, for example, is now at that point, so they, they start, they co-starred until 195, as you can see here, and then they actually got co-billing. And now uh, the full the full issue is Superboy and the Legion of Superheroes. So here's if you know if you know if if you know the Legion from the Silver Age, you can see here that there's Saturn Girl's costume, which she did get in the Action Comics. But we also have Timberwolf with a, a new costume and a new hairdo, a little more menacing looking. And we have Dual Damsel with a uh, another costume, and you know it's a bicolor costume, so she splits. They each have their own color. Again, pretty clever. Um, again, here, I think we still have Carrie Bates and, um, and Cockrum at this point. You can see here uh, the Fatal Five, which will be coming back to haunt them quite a bit. Here's Here you see Princess Projector's new costume and also a modified costume for Chameleon Boy and a new costume for Dream Girl and Star Boy, obviously the big star field. Here, again, Cockrum, I think, designed all, if not most, of these. Here in 200, we see the wedding of Bouncing Boy and Dual Damsel. Again, I'm not going to get to a lot of specifics because there's a lot to go through here. Uh, I'm going to end up somewhere in the... Right before they transition to their loan title, right? Here we have the return of Wildfire, who was disassembled in, uh, I believe, in one of the Super Bowl issues. I think we still have Cockrum here. And I think right around here, we start getting Mike Grell as the artist. I think it's still Bates, although Jim, Jerry, Jim Shooter is coming, right? Again, and, and uh, when he comes, I mean, he's he's got a lot, some really nice stories in here. Here we have um, Lana Lang as she comes into the future as Insect Queen. Here are the ghost of Invisible Kid who was killed uh, over here. By Validus. And um, there's a nice Mike Grell cover. See his, his signature there. Just he had just a, 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 more, a, a much brighter, um, a, you know, sleek lines, you know, much more what you would, you know, sort of think about when you're talking about the future rather than kind of more frumpy ish costumes that they had during the um, Silver Age, right? So now we're, you know, we're squarely in the Bronze Age. And here, one of my favorite stories, notice the Karate Kid's new costume, much better than his drab uh, brown gi that he had forever. Um, I think this is now Jim Shooter starts here, I do believe. But Grell is still on the pencils, and he will be for quite a while. So Jim Shooter came up with some really nice stories here. Here's one about like a resurrected soldier. Here's one about Element Lad getting revenge on the man who essentially killed his civilization, his whole planet. And a little little mention, I have two of those because this one is signed by Mike Grell. Uh, shout out there to J Hood Creative for sending me that in a prize package, I do believe. Again, I really like this era, although a lot was taken up here, about almost half was taken up with the trade dress. Uh, I just really enjoyed these stories. They're mostly one shots, um, but um, well done stuff. You know, they talk about a lot of different you know, there's a lot of different undertones uh, Shooter does, but he does a really brilliant job of just bringing up really interesting stories. I'm going to have to transition out. Here's the first appearance of uh, Tyrock. Uh, he has sound powers. And we have, again, I think these are the Kuns. I think that's what they're called. Oop, sorry about that. Let's get you a little closer here. There we go. Here we got the Bicentennial Banner, which I'm trying to collect all of them. And we still have, I think, still Grell here. 
and beautiful covers. I really like this banner here with uh, a bunch of the different Legion of Superheroes headshots there. We have Grimbor the Chainsman, and I believe that's Charma. And they, they do come back a few times. Notice that Ultra Boy still has sort of like his old costume, but it's a little more updated. Uh, Sun Boy, of course, got a, a little bit more updated as well. You know, sometimes the, the, the costume differences were quite stark and sometimes more subtle. But just a, an artist, an inker that makes them a little more sleek and a little brighter can make a big difference and make them look more futuristic. And here is, oh, what's this guy's name? He's like Star Destroyer. No, it wasn't that. I forgot what his name was. He was a big, great villain, though. Uh, here, I believe, is the first appearance of Dawnstar. Now, I believe this here, I think as Grell is starting to uh, fall off here, and we have some fill-ins by, like, um, uh, Jim, Jim Starlin coming up. But the main artist, I believe, is Jim Sherman. Although, you're going to see that Grell continues doing the covers here. Somewhere around here. I'm not exactly sure the exact issue. Because I haven't, uh, you know, re read these in a little bit. But certainly, you know, uh, I think... Oh, and I think Paul Levitz is starting uh, his run around here somewhere. And uh, he was a long-time Legion uh, writer who... You know, to me, is pretty much the definitive Legion writer, uh, as far as I'm concerned. His he he went into well into the 80s, 90s, and even more, even in the 2000s, he he uh, he wrote about he wrote the Legion's stories. Um, I don't know if you know all the time, but certainly at some point. This here is a reprint. That's a Starlin cover. And this actually is Starlin art in here. I remember this. Yes, absolutely. Even though it's a Mike Grell uh, cover, it's Starlin art in the interior. And again, you'll have like a little, uh, some fill-in artists here and there. Uh, and I think Rick, Rick Estrada uh, started um, drawing around here somewhere. And then, but I think it's still Paul Levitz. There might have been a couple Carrie Bates in there. Um somewhere in here uh they transitioned over to joe staten who was a favorite of mine yeah, over from charlton although if i'm to be honest i don't think he was the best uh legion choice because his art is not quite as sleek um but he did a an admirable job story is a certainly as a storyteller he was uh excellent um even if the actual uh, characters, oh, the uh, Phantom Girls, new costume, and of course, Shadow Last from way back, and of course, here's Cosmic Boys, uh, what we grad gravity defying costume. Um, yeah, I forgot to mention Light Lightning Lad also got a new costume. I should, way back when, this is just what I'm just mentioning him here. Uh, <laughs> so I think we're gonna keep going here. Um, I think. I think Levitz, you know, pretty much took this to the uh, to the end of this particular video, which I'm hopefully to get under here into 15 minutes. Some of the some of these coming up are going to be Whitman. Yeah, here we go, Whitman variants. They came in the I got these in the three pack. I do believe. Yeah, and then we're finishing up here with their. Again, now they're titled. Now Superboy has left, and now this is a Legion of Superheroes title. But we're going to get into that more on the next uh, video. Uh, there was only one crossover that I recall, and that's on DC Presents here, uh, number 13, in this era. Uh, there will be a whole bunch more crossovers coming up in the next part. So that's it for this part. Got it under 15 minutes, so yay for me. I hope you enjoyed. I'm a huge Legion fan. So uh, I just I've been wanting to do this retrospective for a while. So I hope you enjoyed it as much as I do. So stick with me. I'll be doing another one next week and then finishing up in two weeks. All right, everybody. Be kind to each other. Be blessed and be back. Bye.